My name is Jake, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the dividend ETFs with the most inflows here in 2023. Now this is gonna be an interesting video. I did a lot of research and prep for this video. I'm not gonna just take a look at you know the top ETFs that had the most inflows, but rather I'm gonna bucket them based off of different topics and categories. For example, I'm gonna bucket them based off of dividend growth, high dividend, cover call ETFs, and so forth. Now, I've been investing for a handful of years. I've made a lot of mistakes. I've done a lot of things right. Thankfully, I've not given up. And regardless of what's happened, if the market's been up or down, I've tried to stay consistent. And I've noticed, you know, even with myself, you know, you're not going to get everything right. And sometimes when you invest into something, it's not always going to go to plan. It doesn't always mean that the stock is going to go up when you buy it. In fact, usually when I buy something, it usually tends to go down. That's just how things work, I guess. But yeah, things are not always gonna go to plan and that's okay. And it might look a little like this. I just need one of you to jump, not the other one. Uh, just anybody who wants to jump, who wants to jump? I'll jump. You'll jump, go ahead. God dies. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh man, I love it. I love it. Uh, ha Happy New Year, everybody. All right, cool. So here, first off, what I want to do is I want to make a point that, you know, the ETFs that we're going to talk about, ETFs in general, investment, you know, strategies come in and out of favor. You know, you look at SHD. I started investing in SHD back in 2019. Uh, right around here, no one was talking about SEHD. It wasn't until, you know, kind of halfway into the pandemic where people started realizing, oh, wow, this is a really, really good ETF. And a lot of people started talking about it. In fact, in 2022, SEHD was in the top 10 in terms of net inflows of ETFs just in general. So incredibly popular. Here this year, it's you know, pulled back a little bit. It's still very, very much in favor. But I just want to make a point when you compare that to others, like VIG as an example. Um, VIG is actually not on this list that we're going to talk about today. VIG is one of the highest in terms of assets under management, but it was not in favor here in 2023. All right, now let's take a look at the dividend ETFs with the most inflows in 2023. Now, this is not my recommendation. This is just facts of the money, the dollar bills going into these ETFs. Let's categorize this into four buckets. Let's take a look at this from an all around dividend ETF, from a dividend growth perspective, a high dividend perspective, and a cover call ETF perspective. So that's that's how we're gonna view this. And the first one that we're gonna look at is ticker GCAL from Pacer Global. Now, this ETF got 790 million in net inflows this year. The thing that I, I am kind of cautious about this e ETF, I'm just gonna kind of highlight a few things on each one. The first thing that I noticed is this ETF does have a high expense ratio. So kind of do your homework. This isn't one that I would jump into right away and follow the herd and just because everybody else is doing it. And, and it also another thing that I wanna note is it really has greatly underperformed the S&P 500 since its inception in 2016. And that is what the dividend reinvested. So the total return has been really lackluster. So I'm just kind of, like, like I said, this isn't a list that I made. This is what Wall Street and what retail investors are investing in. So maybe they like it because it has the word cow in it. I, I don't know. I've, I've heard of crazier things. So who knows? Uh, the next one is ticker symbol CGDV. Now this is from Capital Group. This ETF is really, really interesting. It has not been on my radar before. It's a fairly new ETF, but it has a good dividend and it's actually, it has a really good, you know, has really good performance against the S&P 500. And at the end of the video here, I'm gonna take a look at this one as well, just kind of as a, as a one-off. So stick around for that. I'll, I'll do a quick overview of what this ETF is because I've never, I've never heard of this ETF before this week. So really, really interesting. The next one all around is our beloved SEHD. This is from Schwab. This is the high dividend ETF that tracks the Dow 100. And it's, uh, you know, I think most people are familiar with this ETF. If you've never heard of this ETF, 
Uh, welcome to planet Earth. And uh, yeah, it's kind of crazy down here. People tend to not like each other. So welcome. All right, the next we're gonna take a look at under dividend growth. The first is gonna be ticker symbol SDVY at 960 million. And this is from the issuer First Trust. Thing that you wanna be aware of here is it does have a high expense ratio. It's focused on the dividend achievers. So it's looking at companies that have increased their dividend over the last 10 years. This is kind of similar to VIG, a similar index, but it has like six times the expense ratio. So be careful with this one, but there was a lot of inflows here in 2023, almost a billion dollars. So I don't know if it was a big hedge fund buying this up or, or what, but it was very, very popular. The next one is gonna be ticker VIGI, and it had 1.2 billion in net inflows. This is the Vanguard International ETF. This is the uh, brother or sister of VIG, but focused on companies outside of the United States. The next one here is gonna be ticker symbol DGRW with 2.2 billion in net inflows here in 2023. This is from Wisdom Tree. This is an ETF that I've covered a few times on my channel. It's a different ETF than most others out there where it's looking at forward looking data, like the earnings per share growth, you know, and not so much looking at historical dividend growth and dividend metrics historically like most other dividend ETFs. Now, this may or may not be a good thing because here in 2023, I, I posted this on, on YouTube here that they actually ended up cutting their dividend a little over 5% from 2022 to 2023. So they actually decreased their dividend, which I found shocking. And I double checked on their own website as well as Seeking Alpha it did show that they did decrease their dividend by over 5% this year. So I don't know, is it a fluke? Is it a one-off? I don't know, but that's uh, the reality of what happened here in 2023. But I do wanna say, I do like DGRW. My wife does invest in it. I think it's a, I think it's a really interesting ETF. The next bucket here that we're gonna take a look at is high dividend. The first one is gonna be ticker symbol FDVV with 490 million in inflows here in 2023. Now, this ETF, I think, is really, really interesting. I looked at this ETF a few months ago. The thing that I find interesting about this, first, it's from Fidelity, so it's a reputable issuer. But the thing that I think is interesting is it's a high dividend ETF. It's labeled high dividend, but there's a huge but. But it still has a lot of growth because it has over 20% allocated to technology. Because this ETF is so interesting, towards the end of the video, I'm gonna do a quick overview of V of FDVV, so stick around if you're interested in this. I was definitely surprised by this, and I think you will be as well. The next one that we're gonna take a look at is ticker DEM with 630 million in inflows. This is from Wisdom Tree. This is a high yielding ETF. It does have a high expense ratio. The total return has not been the greatest, but you're getting a, a higher than market you know, dividend yield. And 2023 was a pretty tough year for dividend stocks. I mean, think about it. You could buy treasuries, pretty much risk-free assets yielding four or 5%, or even in a savings account, a high yield savings account. Like there were so many different options out there that were so less, with less volatility and less risk. There's no wonder that, you know, high dividend stocks for the most part underperformed in 2023. But we know that the market works in cycles. So we'll see how that plays out here over the next coming years. The next one here is ticker VYMI with 1.4 billion in inflows in 2023. This is the Vanguard International ETF, high dividend ETF. This would be the sister brother to VYM. This is the international version where it's focused on companies outside of the United States. So I was surprised by this. There was a lot of, there was a lot of international ETFs this year that got a lot of inflows. The last bucket that we're gonna take a look at are covered call ETFs. Covered call ETFs, these are not qualified dividends. These are more focused on derivatives where they're focused on a cover call strategy where an index will purchase shares of a business like you know a Google or a Microsoft and they will sell a cover call against that asset against that underlying stock. Now, if you didn't understand what I've said there, I've made videos on cover call ETFs. Um, there's a lot of pros and cons with these ETFs. They're very popular. They're very similar to you know a lot of these ETFs that a lot of dividend investors here on YouTube are talking about, these yield max ETFs. They're kind of in that category. Um, but a couple of things that you wanna be aware of is they're not taxed the same as 
as, you know, a Coca-Cola or, you know, some of these other ETFs. So just be very, very mindful of that. The first one that we're going to take a look at is ticker KNG with 1.3 billion in inflows. This is from First Trust. The thing that you want to be aware of is this does have a high expense ratio. It's focused on, div I believe, dividend aristocrats, but if they sell cover calls. I think that they changed their strategy because now they are selling cover calls and they're now issuing a monthly distribution. So before it was quarterly, I think it was a little bit straightforward, but I think they're seeing all of the money that JP Morgan is generating with these other cover call ETFs. And they're like, how can we get more money from retail investors? Well, let's sell cover calls and triple our expense ratio. That sounds like a great idea. Well, apparently it worked because a lot of money went into this ETF here in 2023. The next one here is ticker JEPQ with 6.5 billion in net inflows in 2023. This is the JP Morgan cover call ETF. This is covering the NASDAQ, okay? So it's covering, uh, you know, the NASDAQ. And I do own this ETF. This was my highest performing stock here in 2023, or ETF in this case. Uh, it's not been around for a long time. I think about a year, a little over a year and a half and it's performed very, very well. I mean, no wonder when the NASDAQ has gone up, what, like 30 or 40% this year? Um, it's been a really, really great uh, investment vehicle for me this year, and I, I'm really, really glad that I, I bought into it. The last one here is ticker JEPI with 12.9 billion in net inflows here in 2023. This is from JP Morgan. This is a cover call ETF, very similar to JEPQ. However, there with JEPI, it's focused on the S&P 500. So with JEPI, even though we've it's had the most net inflows, the share price has not gone anywhere this year. If you look at the share price, it stayed pretty much flat, regardless of how much money is flowing into this ETF. This ETF was one of the highest uh, performing, well, it's not, not only performing, but highest net inflows in 2022 along with SCHD. So really, really popular. This ETF has only been around for a handful of years. It just kind of shows how, you know, with innovation comes opportunity and it's been really interesting. And I think this is why everybody, if you, if you didn't know this already, this is why you have yield max defiance and all of these other I'm going to go so far as to say meme cover call ETFs, right? If you like it, if you're into that, that's cool. I'm not I'm not taking any personal shots, but the reality is because of the success of Jeppy, a lot of other companies are looking at that and like, "Oh, we can do something very similar and charge three times the expense ratio and these retail investors are going to buy it because they like Jeppy." That's kind of what's happened. And I am not, I personally, I don't invest in these other ones. Um, Jeppy has a 0.35% expense ratio. It is higher than most others that I own, but it's still fairly low. Most of these newer ones like Tesla, Kony, and NVIDIA, whatever, I can't even keep track of them all. There's so many of them. They have a 1% expense ratio. They're really, really high. So um, just be really, really careful when, when you're taking a look at these cover call ETFs. But anyways, the list that we made that we talked about here today, it's not subjective to my opinion. This is the what actually happened here in 2023. All right, so now let's take a look at this one that I was mentioning earlier with CGDV. Let's do, go into Seeking Alpha and let's take a look at a couple of things. So first off, this ETF, I have not had on my radar. And the reason why is because it's not been around for very long. It's been around for about a year, a little over a year. And if we take a look at it and we see, okay, well, how, you know, what what is this ETF? This ETF is focused primarily on an index that they've created, that they've generated, focused mostly around you know, the dividend itself. I've taken a look at their website and looked at the fund methodology. You know, it's pretty straightforward. It's just focused on assets or companies that pay a dividend higher than the S&P 500. That's what they put on their website. They don't really go into much more detail that, from what I could see on their website. Um, maybe if I spend an hour and looked at, you know, their you know, their filings and all of their resources, I could maybe find it. But just, you know, high level overview, what they state on their website is that it's focused on companies that have a higher yield, higher dividend than the S&P 500, okay? And we look at the holdings, the couple of things here, you'll notice that there's a high percentage into technology. So 
just right off the bat, you should expect a little bit more growth from an ETF like this, but they don't have the traditional like Apple, for example. They do have Microsoft, but they don't include Apple. Um, and another thing that caught my eye is there's only 55 holdings. So if we go over and we take a look at their website and we can take a look at all of their individual holdings, you can see what they have. And I just realized I said they didn't have it over there on Seeking Alpha on the top 10, but they do actually have Apple in this index but the, uh, the weighting is a little bit lower. Okay, but the point that I wanna make is you'll notice here that because they only have 50 holdings or 55, I think is what they saw earlier, is they're all pretty equally weighted. And so if you want an index that has ETF, you know, has the companies in there that are fairly equally weighted, I think this one may be, you know, something to take a look at. They have some pretty good companies in here that, like I said, you know, all companies hot with a higher dividend than the, the S&P 500. And then lastly here, something that I wanted to show you is, you know, you look at the historical performance since its inception, since the inception of this ETF, it's actually outperformed the S&P 500 SCHD and DGRO. This is what really caught my eye, okay? And this is why I'm spending so much time on it. If it's doing so well, especially in 2023, when dividend stocks were really underperforming, I think that this is something to take a look at. The next one that I wanted to take a look at here really quick is FDVV. This is from Fidelity. This is a high dividend ETF. Now, this one is really interesting. First off, it has a fairly low expense ratio. This is you know, in my comfort zone, anything under like 0.35% is in my comfort zone. Um, but here's the thing that I wanna show you. Um, first off, it almost has 25%, a quarter of this ETF is focused on technology. I want you to answer this question, okay? I'm gonna pause here for a second. What other ETF that you know of has, is labeled as a high dividend and has a high dividend, but also has technology at the highest weighting sector and has over 20% in technology. What other ETF do you know of that is a high dividend ETF that has so much allocated to technology? I'm gonna wait for a second. Okay, I didn't think so. You didn't know one either. Okay, so here's what I wanna show you. This ETF is a high dividend ETF, but its, high, its largest positions are in Apple, Microsoft, and Nvidia. What? How is that even possible? Even Broadcom is in the top 10. There's over 110 holdings, 31% in the top 10. This really, really is interesting, okay? And it's interesting because it's labeled high dividend, but it looks like a growth ETF, okay? So now let's take a look at, well, what's going on with the dividend? What is the dividend? The dividends, it's higher than SEHD. What? It, it, you're getting like a similar dividend like SEHD, but you're getting much more growth in there. Well, at least from, from the makeup in the top 10, right? Uh, the growth, um, you'll notice that the growth, let's see here, um, maybe we go back here. Let's look at the growth. The dividend CAGR over the last five years has been okay. Last three years, it's done very, very well. I'd be curious to see you know, what it's gonna look like year over year. But um, I think that this is an ETF that it kind of is, you know, if I wanted to add this maybe as a satellite position, Maybe we could take a look at, like, look at this. In December, December's payout, 0.42 cents per share, more than double that of last year. But you look here, it's actually lower. So you want to look at this for the, for the whole year, but huge growth here from year over year. And like I said, this would never be a core position in my portfolio, but it could definitely be something like a satellite position. Now let's Last thing here, let's see if it fits the, if it passes the sniff test with the, uh, I just made that up. Is that a thing of the sniff test? Uh, what? Uh, let's take a look, DGRO, let's compare these and let's look at the total return. And I, I can't remember, I don't think you can do this unless you have premium. If you wanna sign up to Seeking Alpha Premium, there's a link in the description. I, I will say this, honestly, I, I am an affiliate of Seeking Alpha. I've been an affiliate for a couple of years. They have their very best pricing at the end of the year. So with my link, you're gonna get the best pricing. Here in January, the price will go up and I, I, I kind of track year over year how, you know, how their pricing works. The best pricing that you can get with Seeking Alpha is Thanksgiving, uh, New Year's. They do have a 4th of July one as well, but the best pricing that they've offered these last couple of years is over the new year. 
So if you if you are thinking about signing up, it's the best time of year to sign up. So FDV, it's been around for what, a couple of years? Can we see five years? I, I didn't prepare this before, so I'm seeing this as you're seeing it. Uh, it's been around at least five years. Okay, so where has it been? It's underperformed the others. Okay, so it's underperformed the S&P 500, SHD, DGRO. Now, this we saw that the dividend growth rate over the last five years was under 8%, but the last three years, it's been higher. Well, let's see what it looks like over the last three years. Oh my gosh. I, I had a theory and this was this was what I was thinking. Over the last three years, it's done very well. And so my, if I were to go so far as to say the pandemic probably changed things. Pre-pandemic, this ETF probably looked a little bit different. Post-pandemic, because this includes, you know, the pandemic, I think that this index may have changed. So something to keep on your radar. I'm not saying go and buy this. This is something that I could maybe consider as a, you know, as a satellite position, maybe five, maximum 10% of my total portfolio. I could maybe see myself considering it. I'm, I'm not going to buy it today or tomorrow. I don't have the money. I'm kind of bristify. I don't have the money to, to invest, but maybe if I were to reallocate something, maybe I would consider this for the future. So I thought this was interesting. I've talked a lot about core and satellite and a lot of that stuff. If you're new to my channel, I talk a lot about the simple path to wealth with dividend investing. This was inspired by JL Collins. I'm a huge fan of, of his and, and what he's done for the FIRE community. Um, I created the simple path to wealth with dividend investing, where I talk about a core and satellite approach to investing and how to build your portfolio based off of your investing time horizon. And if you're looking to retire off of your dividend portfolio like I did here this year, that may be something that might interest you. So at the end of this video, I'll have that video pop up next and you can check out that video next. Thanks so much for watching everybody. Hope everyone has a happy new year and I'll see you everybody in the new year. Please subscribe. 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 You know what? I think we're going to be friends. Can everyone say hi to my friend? That's crazy. I just wanted to say thanks. I'm glad you came along, partner.